So hi everybody, uh, my name is Daniel Laskwitz. I'm a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft and I work uh, with the Power Platform. So I work with Power Apps, Power Automate, Copilot Studio, the whole bunch of the products that are in the Power Platform. And today I'm gonna talk about AI prompts in Copilot Studio. Uh, it has been introduced uh, not too long ago. So a couple of weeks back, I think uh, they released the uh, capabilities to add AI prompts to Copilot Studio. And for a quick recap, let's talk a little bit about Copilot Studio. So Copilot Studio is good in two big things. Uh, you can create your own agents or what we used to call uh, custom Copilot, where you can create uh, an agent for enterprises. So you can, for your own company, for instance, create an agent and then add all kinds of knowledge to it, add all kinds of logic to it. And then you can share that, for instance, on Teams or on Facebook or on all kinds of different channels that you have uh, for the customers of that agent. Also, it can extend and customize the first party copilot. So if you want to, for instance, extend Microsoft 365 copilot, Copilot Studio is a way you can do that. And it just it doesn't end only at Microsoft 365 Copilot. You also have Copilot for sales, Copilot for service, and other copilots that you can extend there as well. Let's move on to AI Builder because AI Builder is the part what I was talking about with AI prompts. AI Builder is a service that will make it easier for you to work with AI. It's a low-code service that you can use uh, to easily use models that are already pre-built or that lead, need little configuration. You can also create your own GPT prompt. So we already have those large language models. And of course, we can create uh, prompts on that. But it doesn't make sense to always have the same prompt from a user. Uh, and sometimes you also want to make it easier for users to uh, fire a prompt, for instance. So they want to maybe make a shorter text for that prompt. And then the AI prompt can have a lot more information, but it will uh, still get a lot of information. And that will save the user a lot of time. Of course, we also have AI plugins. And those are, for instance, to create uh, extensions for uh, Copilot for Microsoft 365. Let's zoom in a little bit on the prompt. So what you can do is you can define a prompt and a prompt can have uh, one or more inputs, for instance. You can even ground it in data from Dataverse, for instance, and then people can trigger that prompt. They can trigger it from multiple places. They can trigger it from, for instance, Power Automate, which you can see on the left, or Power Apps, which you can see on the right. But also we can now use that for Copilot Studio. So let's show that in a demo. And I'm going to create a topic inside of a Copilot to uh, show you how the AI prompts work. So here we are in Copilot Studio, and I already created a Copilot. And it's pretty cool because this is a template. It's called the Safe Travels template. And what you can do here is you can just use that template and it will automatically get uh, a travel website for the US, for instance, in there. But you can also add your own um, regional travel website, for instance, if you want to. And then you can ask questions. So you can already ask about what is the US visa policy, for instance. And then when you send that, it will already answer those questions. And that shouldn't take long. I hope there we go. So here it already shows an answer about the US visa policy. And when I hover it at the bottom, I hope you can see that it's a travel.state.gov website. And that's the website from the US travel website, for instance. But in this case, I want to create a topic and I want to do something more because I can add all kinds of knowledge to it, but sometimes I also want to create something, for instance. And in this case, because we have a, a safe travels co-pilot, what I want to do is I want to create travel plans. So I'm going to create a topic and I'm going to select from blank. And then I'm going to give it a title called travel plans. 
the first thing I need to do when I'm in a topic is I need to add trigger phrases. So that means that I need to add phrases that Copilot Studio can use to trigger this topic. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to edit this and I'm going to add some phrases. For instance, travel plan, and I'm going to add, can you help me build a travel plan? For now, I think this is fine. So I'm going to close it down again and I'm going to go to the next step. And what I personally don't like when I use a, a co-pilot or a chatbot, I don't like co-pilots that ask a whole bunch of things. So when I want something, I don't want question one. I need to answer it. Question two, I need to answer that one as well. Question three, then I get another answer. That, that's basically what I don't like. So I'd rather have a form. And that, that's what we can do with adaptive cards. So I'm going to add the ask with adaptive card node. And when I do that, I can click on the icon here and then I can um, already paste a adaptive card that I have. So what I can click on is the expand button. And here you can see the whole um, the whole adaptive card that I added here in this uh, in this part. And when I exit this, you can already see that there is a, a sample basically of that adaptive card, and you can see that we ask two questions: Where are you going to? How many activities are you looking for? And there's a submit button. So that's basically what I want to ask. It's almost a little bit of a form. And the next thing I want to do here is I want to call an action. And here we have the option to create a prompt. And this is the AI prompts that I was talking about. And when I click on this, it will open the prompt builder from AI builder. And then I can define my prompt. I can give it a name. I can give it a prompt. Uh, I can start creating the inputs, for instance. So let's hope my browser is going to work. Yeah, here we are. So let me add travel plan as a name, and I'm going to paste the prompt here. And the prompt is um, even a typo in there. So let me fix that one. But it says, uh, please give me number options for activities in destination for people who are there for the first time. Please return a numbered list with emojis in the name of the activity and give it a brief description. These little things here, like number and destination, I added those to have some kind of placeholder. What I want to do now is I want to add inputs and I want to replace these placeholders with those inputs. So let me add a first input here. And I'm going to call that number. And I'm going to give it a sample data of three in this case. I'm going to add another input and I'm going to call this destination. And I'm going to use sample data, Amsterdam, the Netherlands. And what I want to do now is I want to replace these little things here. And I want to click on insert and then replace them with the actual input. So I'm going to remove destination as well. And I uh, let me make sure that I'm on the right spot. And I'm going to add destination here as well. And with this, I already have, because of the sample data, I already have some sample data so I can test out the prompt. So because I already have the sample data of free and Amsterdam Netherlands here, I can click test prompt. And that will trigger the large language model. And it will give me a couple of options here. So here I can see that I have three different options for Amsterdam here. Another thing that I want to really show you is that we have the data used part, and that's currently in preview. And what I can do here is I can add data from Dataverse. And what's also really cool is that we have output here. So we can select if we want text output or JSON output. And JSON is, of course, really interesting when you use Power Apps or Power Automate, where you need a little bit more structured data. In the case of Copilot Studio, the text makes a little bit more sense. Uh, so I'm using that one here. Another really cool thing is that we can actually switch the models. 
so we have now GPT 3.5, that's the default, but I can also switch to 4.0 for instance, and I can uh, change the temperature. So if I wanted to give it a little bit more freedom, I can uh, change the temperature here. If I click test prompt now, for instance, it would use GPT 4.0, and you can already see that it's a little bit more chatty. So you can see that it, it it didn't just respond with the three options, but it gave me a little bit of an intro as well. So, um, so it says, sure, here are three activities you can enjoy in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, for instance. When I'm ready, I can now uh, save the custom prompt. And that should save it in uh, the environment that I'm in. And when I'm done with that, I can close out of this. I can click on call and action. And what I can do here is I can enter uh, travel and I can select the travel plan prompt that I just created. Now we have the option to enter the inputs. And of course, because we already had that adaptive card, I can now select an output of that adaptive card. So I can click on destination and with number, I can click on number and that will make it possible for me to put those ex uh, the outputs of the adaptive card into the inputs of the prompt. And next, I also want to have an output because I want to make sure that everything that comes back from the AI prompt, I want to store that. So I'm going to click create new and I'm going to change the variable name here and call this prompt output. And uh, the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to add the send a message node. And what that does, it gives me the option to uh, insert the output variable that we just had with the prompt output. And I can insert that in a message because we also want to communicate back, of course, the output of the prompt. So when I click on that, I can look through all the variables that I have. And it's pretty interesting because it has the prompt output, which is the full output of that prompt. But it also has a couple of um, a couple of parts in there, uh, the finish reason, before, for, for instance, and the text. In this case, I'm going to use prompt output text because I only want to have the text output of that prompt. And now, we are basically done with the, uh, with the, with the uh, topic. So let's save it. And if that all goes well, there we go. I'll refresh the testing part. And what I can do now is I can ask for travel plan, for instance, and that will trigger the adaptive card. I can <laughs> finish reason. <laughs> I can uh, enter the Chicago, Illinois, for instance, because Ignite is coming up and I want uh, three activities there, I can click on submit and that will fire the uh, AI prompt and it will respond with some activities that I can do for the uh, Chicago area. And uh, that's basically how easy it is to use those AI prompts in there. And this is just an example for travel, but you can imagine that this is like a really, useful pattern to use in a lot of scenarios because this is just for travel, but there are lots of business reasons to uh, to think of as well. Let me go back to my slides here and give you a couple of extra uh, resources because what you can also do is you can uh, go to the AI prompts uh, link that is here. So at the top, you can see aka.ms slash MCS slash AI prompts. And that is the link that will uh, show you the documentation of how to create those AI prompts in Copilot Studio. We have a whole bunch of prompt samples, just like the, uh, the travel prompt that I just uh, showed. Uh, you can see those at AI Builder prompts. You can, of course, try out Copilot Studio, and there's also a really good uh, good resource for the implementation guide. So when you are working with Copilot Studio and you want to enable that inside of your enterprise organization, uh, it is really nice to have that implementation guide, which helps you uh, see what you can do with Copilot Studio.